Hello friends, welcome to operating system class and in this class we will see the resource allocation graph and in today's lecture we are going to see the definition of resource allocation graph and two examples. The first one is for resource allocation graph without deadlock and second one is the resource allocation graph with deadlock and let us see these things in today's class. We know graph consists of a set of vertices and set of edges. Okay, that is G equal to V comma E. That is, see these are vertices and these vertices will be connected by using the edges. Okay, that is called as graph generally. And when come to resource allocation graph, here also we are having vertices and edges, but two types of vertices are there. Okay, the first one is process vertices and second one is resource vertices. Process vertices represented by the word P and resource vertices are represented by the word uh, R. P equal to P1, P2, etc. up to Pn. That means a set consisting of all process in the system. And when come to R, R equal to R1, R2, etc. up to Rm. That means a set consisting of all resources type in the system. Okay. See, when come to resource allocation graph, we are having two types of vertices. First one is type P and second one is type R. Right. Okay. The type P represent the symbol circle and type R represented the square. Right. When come to edges, here we are having two types of edges. First one is request edge. Request edge, that is the directed edge that will connect the process to resources. Okay, this is called as request edge. That means the process P1 gives request for this R1, that is resource. Okay, and second one is assignment edge. Assignment edge that connects the resource to the process. Resource to the process. That means the resource R is assigned to this process P. Okay. So, two types of edges. First one is request edge. Request edge connects the process to the resource. That means the process gives request to this resource. And second one is assignment edge. That is the directed edge connects the resource to P. That means the resource is assigned to this process P. Right? Let us see some more detail about this resource allocation graph. When come to process, there is no problem. Circle is represented for the process. When come to resources, if the resources are having four instances, then that will be represented like that. If the resources are having three instances, then that will be represented like this. If it is two instances, then inside the rectangle, we are having only two dots. Okay. When come to edges, see this is request edge. Request edge means that will be connect process to resource, isn't it? But if the process requests any of the resources, then none of the resource will be allocated to P1. So, it simply gives the request for this R1. So, that will be represented like this. And the P1 is holding instance of Rj, that is assignment edge. Assignment edge. When come to assignment edge, which particular instance of R1 is assigned to P? That should be represented like this. Okay. Instead of from this edge, we have to start the um, arrow from that particular instance to this P process P1. Okay. So, this is uh, holding edge. This is the difference between single instance resource into multiple instance resources. Now, let us see one example for this resource allocation graph. Okay, here we are having sets of process, resources and edges. Okay, uh, process, three processes are there, P1, P2 and P3 and resources, four resources are there, R1, R2, R3 and R4. When come to resource instance, here only one instance are there in R1, two instances are there for R2, when come to R3, only one instance. When come to R4, there are three instances. Okay, three dots are there. Hence, three instances are there for R4. Okay, when come to process states. Okay, we are having three processes, P1. P1 
holds one instance of R2 and waiting for R1. Okay, when come to P2, P2 holds one instance from R2 and one instance from R1 and it is waiting for R3. When come to P3, P3 holds one instance from R3. Okay, this is what the sample the source allocation graph. If there is no cycle in a graph, then there is no deadlock in the system. Okay, as per our example, there is no cycle in our example, in our graph. Hence, that there will be no deadlock. Right? So, now let us see the execution sequence of all the processes P1, P2 and P3. See here, P3 will get execute first because P3 will not wait for any other resources. Already P2 held one R3. Hence, there is no need of waiting other resources. So, first P3 execute first. Then it will release the R3. Okay, after completing P3, the R3 will be released by P3. Right? Now, this R3 will be assigned to P2. Okay? R3 will be assigned to P2. Hence, P2 uh, hold all the resources. R1, R2 and R3. Hence, without any delay, P2 will complete its execution. Right? After completing this P2, then it will release. That is, P2 will release R1, R2 and R3. Okay? Now, the P1 will get. Now, the R1 is assigned to P1 because already it gives request for R1, isn't it? Now, the R1 will be assigned to P1. Hence, P1 completes its execution. Okay? Now, what is the sequence? First, P3 will execute first. After that, P2 will execute and after that P1 will execute. Hence, there is no deadlock in our system. And next let us see some other example which contains cycle but no deadlock. Okay. In this diagram, we are having four processes P1, P2, P3 and P4. Okay. And two resources each contains two instances R1 and R2. Both are having two instances. Okay. And this is the scenario. Uh, here we are having cycle. See, one cycle is there. But without any deadlock, how the process will get share those resources and they will execute uh, successfully. Okay, first uh, P2 and P4 completes its execution because these two process may not be wait for some other processes, isn't it? They are having only one resource R1 for P2. R1 is already assigned to P2, isn't it? So, P2 completes its execution. See, after that, this uh, P2 will release this R1 and that R1 will be assigned to P1. Okay. Next, uh, P1 is having both the resources now. R2 as well as R1, isn't it? So, now P1 completes, sorry, P1 completes its execution. See, once P1 completes its execution, it will release this R2. Okay, and now that R2 will be assigned to this P3. Okay, now P3 starts its execution and completes without any delay, right? And obviously P4 next it will start its execution and completed successfully. So, this is the sequence of process execution without any deadlock. And now let us see another example for resource allocation graph with the deadlock. Okay, and this example taken from our previous example, okay, that is resource allocation graph without deadlock. Now, this is our scenario. P1 is giving request for R2. Okay, now what will happen? See, all the process are holding one resource and it is waiting for other resources and those are already held by some other process. Okay. Hence, none of the process will complete its execution. Hence, the system will be in deadlock state. Okay, unsafe state. The system will be in unsafe state because this process, this process is holding one resource, one resource and waiting for some other resources. This particular resource is already holding by other processes. 
okay all the resources will be hold by some other process and waiting for another processes hence this is the deadlock state and the basic facts identified from this resource allocation graph is if the graph contains no cycle then there will not be any deadlock the system is in safe state okay if graph contains a cycle then if only one instance per resource type then definitely there will be a deadlock and if several instances per resource type that is if the resource contains more number of instances then possibilities of deadlock may be there okay this may be in unsafe state unsafe state right up to this we have seen the resource allocation graph so in this class we have seen the definition of resource allocation graph after that three examples first one is resource allocation graph without deadlock that is without cycle without cycle and second one is the resource allocation graph with the cycle without deadlock and the resource allocation graph with the cycle and with the deadlock okay in the next class we will see another important topic from fourth unit deadlock thank you